We're going on the PTS! Or, oh, well, we would be if I ever remembered to actually install the thing. So let's do that now, and uh, then we'll check back. 11 hours later. Ooh, it's EU character copy week, I didn't know. We've kind of been avoiding the PTS as it had some pretty major problems in week one. It was taken offline, people were locked out of their accounts, it was a very sad and stressful time for everyone involved. But that's all over now, and beefy brawn blast my European muscle cake, it's time to explore the gold road. Well, I guess I was in Cyrodiil last time I played this character, but we need to go to the West Weald. And it looks like by default we've got a way shrine unlocked. Let's go! Oh no, spooky Laramil the Wise is the quest giver here? I greet you, chosen of fate. Holy crap! You are creepy as shit. Hermaeus Mora calls upon you to defend this world and all of reality. Really, Laramil? That's absolutely fascinating. But I'm not here to do your quest. I'll wait until it's on live. I'm here to check out Skingrad! Back in January, we got a first look at Skingrad as it appears in the Elder Scrolls Online during the global reveal of the Gold Road chapter. We had fun comparing Skingrad as it appears in ESO to how it looked in 2006's Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, and now that the entire chapter is out on the public test server, I think it would be fun to go a lot more in-depth at the before and after and see what's changed over the centuries between the two games. Ah, Skingrad, it's nice to be back. Let's have a look at you! Hot diggity dog! This place is magnificent. An embarrassment of riches, as they say. It's somehow both familiar and new, and a lot more detailed than the version we saw 18 years ago in Oblivion, which is to be expected, of course, given how much graphics technology has improved over the years. Lots of different buildings, too. This street leading up to the church is a lot wider than it was in Elder Scrolls IV. Obviously, with the ESO being an MMO, some changes were necessary, and it's cool that we can use the 800-year time difference between ESO and Oblivion to explain it away. A lot can change in 800 years. Just look at London across only 200 years. Hey, Chris, how are you going to compare this to Oblivion if you're just in ESO? Well, what if you get in the PTS and I get in Oblivion and we go to the same places at the same time? You do have the PTS installed, right? Um, not yet. I guess I'm the slacker this time. Yes, yes you are. But that's okay. While you're installing it, I'm going to jump between the PTS and live servers to look at the before and after of the zone border with Gold Coast and Cranklawn. Super dank. Super dank. <laughs> We're up in the northwest corner of the West Weald, and this is the door that leads into Craglawn. Let's see what's changed. Ooh, exciting. Ah, the old tunnel through the mountains trick. And a brand new Redguard style door, bringing us out into that little area just south of Belkarth. That's cool. It looks like the land has been widened here to make a walkway, but everything up here looks the same though. Let's switch over to the live server and spot the difference. Yeah, the land is definitely wider on the PTS. And look! No door. Now there is a door. But now there isn't. Door. No door. Door. No door. Door. Hold on. We're down south now at the border between the West Weald and the Gold Coast. You can see the edge of Kavach and Varen's Wall through there, but if you interact with this gate, you'll just magically be on the other side of Varen's Wall in the Gold Coast. Looking at the maps of both zones, you can see there's a not insignificant amount of land between the two areas that just gets teleported across when travelling between them. In fact, if we merge both maps together, you can see just how wide this tract of land is. You cannot pass! Now there's a thought. Let's take a quick detour to the dungeon Blackdrake Villa. What do you want to go there for? Well, Cat, you remember these blocked gates in the courtyard before you enter the dungeon proper? Yeah. You can see out into the West Weald and there's even a road leading out there. Let me open the map. On the Gold Coast side, you can see I'm clearly north of Varen's Wall. And from the West Weald map, it looks like I'm in that zone. I actually wondered if now that the neighbouring zone is in the game, Blackdrake Villa might get an entrance from both sides, seeing as it sits right between the two zones, similar to how the Sweetwater Cascades Player House has entrances from Northern Elsewhere and Blackwood, but that doesn't seem to be the case this time. Let's travel over to the Westwield side of this area, and there's an unclimbable ledge, but it does look like the scenery matches up from both sides. Looking at the maps after merging them, we can see there's another big swathe of impassable rocky terrain separating the two zones that's just teleported across when moving between them. Hey, I can see the back of Lintelgrand Manor from here too. That's my house in the Gold Coast. Isn't it lovely? Shout out to my toilet! You need to flush that thing. <laughs> I'm gonna need a plumber first. Yahoo! Seeing as I'm here on the live server, let's take a look at the gateways between the Gold Coast and Westweald and see them as they are, or were, before the changes. 
This one on the north border has never had any text or interactable button at all when approaching it, but now on the PDS we can see it's a completely new door and there's text to show it leads to the West Weald. The other gate just south of Kavach has said Kolovian Estates ever since the Gold Coast first arrived with the Dark Brotherhood DLC back in 2016. Oh look, there's a law book here explaining why this wall exists. Press pause now to read! Over on the PTS, we can see there's a new gate here too, and it now says West Weald instead of Colovian Estates. All right, Chris, I got the PTS installed. If you want to get an Oblivion, you do have it installed, right? Of course I do. I installed it in January when we did the first look comparison thing. Ah, but have you played it since then to get the fast travel unlocked so that you can show the places? Well, no. In fact, I haven't played Oblivion for any length of time since 2012, according to my Xbox achievements. Well, I guess you're the slacker then. All right, that's fair, but I have a plan. Over on Nexus Mods, I found a completed game save file for Steam with everything unlocked. Link on the screen there if you want to get it for yourself. And thank you, Sydney B, for doing all the legwork to make the rest of this video possible. Emma oh Gerd Oblivion. We've really only got Cyrodiil's Nyban Valley left to be added to ESO now that the West Wheel has arrived, and it's to the West Wheel I shall go, although not on my save from January, I'm only level 1. Let's load up this bloke from Nexus Mods. He can actually move and defend himself. Where am I? Ah, the Colovian Highlands, just north of Kvatch, but I need to get to Skingrad. Where are you right now, Cat? I'm just outside Skingrad, and Spooky Laramel is here. Hermaeus Mora. Ah! Easy peasy lemon squeezy. <laughs> okay, head up toward the battlegrounds area. There's a statue up there that I want to take a closer look at on the PTS. Hang on, I'm not sure where that is. Oh, wait, someone's here. Who is it? Oh, it's Iffy. Ooh, what's that handsome chap doing on the PTS? Oh, he's filming for YouTube as well. Oh, probably working on his scribing how-to video. I'm kind of looking forward to the scribing. Me too. I am so excited about the scribing and skill customization. It's going to be super dank. And if you want to know more about the scribing system that's coming with Gold Road, check out Iffy's... Check out Iffy's video guide over on his channel. Link in the description below. Hey, Chris, I found the statue. It's a horse? That's the one, Cat. I'm curious because it's still here 800 years later in Oblivion, or at least I think it's meant to be the same statue. The pedestal is definitely the same, but the surroundings here are completely different. It's inside the city walls. Did it get moved at some point in the past? I'm not sure. Where are you on your map? Here's where I am. Interesting. You're just north of Skin Ground itself. On my map, I am... I mean, it kind of looks like I'm in the same place, but I'm inside of the city. I need a more detailed map. Let's shove your map to the side and bring in this super detailed skin grad map I found on UESP.net and... Oh, we are in the same place. The statue didn't move, the city grew around it. How about that? That's cool. Well, I don't know what they did to build this city up, but for the rest of time, it would be like no one even knew we was ever here. You know what we should do is run up that little gulch between the two halves of the city and compare the differences. I think that's a great idea because I'm already standing right there. Me too. It's kind of wild. We are standing in the exact same spot 800 years apart in Elder Scrolls lore. Let's run down to the other end. I'll put a side by side. Oh, that's a cool idea. You can really see the difference now with the city walls built up on both sides in Elder Scrolls 4. Yeah, there's no wall at all over here in ESO on the left side. And there are castle gates at both ends of this ditch in Oblivion. Is this gate there in the past, Cat? Nope, but it's wide open. Just a road leading off into the distance. Hey, let's do a 360 and compare. It really is so cool, and it really gives you a sense of the city growing and being built over time. Hey, let's get up on top of that bridge. Now you can really see the difference. This culvert was completely outside the city walls in the past, but in Oblivion's time it's contained within the city and gated at either end. Makes sense that the bridges connecting the two sides of the city be protected, but it's a little bit sad seeing such a lovely view be cut off in Oblivion's time. Yeah, it really is. Hey, let's go look at the church. You said the street was wider in ESO's time? Yeah, a lot wider. Look at that. Oh wow, yeah. Like the whole city was remodeled over the years. But the church has stayed the same. It must be the oldest building in Skingrad. Hey, let's go check out the castle. We absolutely need to check out the castle, but real quick, Cat, while you're up at the church, we need an answer to the biggest question from January's video. What's the question? This question, of course. I think it'll be called the Two Sisters Lodge. More importantly, are we going to meet an ancestor? I'm so hungry. 
to our poor friend Nigidius the Needy. Thank you, kind sir. Well, there is a lady here who looks like she could be his ancestor. She has the same job. I'll take it. Let's go check out Skingrad Castle. It's awesome they recreated the castle view so well. I agree, Count. The world designers on ESO definitely did their homework. The outline of Skingrad's most notable landmark is instantly recognizable to anyone who played the Elder Scrolls IV, but the level of detail is improved in every way here. Wow, this is beautiful. The main gate into the castle looks pretty weathered in Elder Scrolls IV. How does it look back there in the past, Cat? This is really amazing. Oh, wow. This is a lot more detailed than what we saw 18 years ago in Oblivion. And I remember Oblivion receiving glowing reviews for its visuals back in 2006. Just shows how far graphics technology has come, even with ESO itself turning 10 this year. You know, every chapter, they push the technology and they make it so much more intricate. And there's so much more great stuff going on. It's awesome. Let's see how well we can match our mouse movements to take in the view here and... Ooh, freeze frame. That's a heck of a before and after. How's that for urban sprawl? It's nice to see both the castle and the church are still standing, but boy do they look dilapidated and aged in oblivion compared to what we're getting now with Gold Road. This bridge is huge in ESO. Indeed. In oblivion, we can see it's the same bridge, yet somehow smaller. Though this is more a side effect of Elder Scrolls Online being an MMO and having to make things bigger to accommodate more players in a shared world space. I mean, I understand them having to scale it up, but wow, that's a lot bigger. Hey, Chris, let's have a race up the actual gold road. Okay, I'm there. Let's see how far we can go. I'm guessing there'll be a border with the PvP Cyrodiil zone in ESO. I can see Imperial City from here in Oblivion. Yep, but there's a castle gate there on ESO's side. Okay, let's race. I'm going to speed it up since it's quite a way to go on foot. Let's check our maps again real quick. Okay, we're definitely on the gold road. Hurry up, Slowpoke! Well, there's a big, burly, beefy ogre accosting me now, so I'm gonna have to fight with him. Did I win? Well, yeah, I guess you did, since I'm stuck in battle with this great slab of meatiness, so well done, Catatonia! There's one last place I want to go look at, although it's not actually in the West Weald, it's in the Gold Coast, but as we've seen, it's between both zones. It's just north of Kvatch, so that's where I've ported to. Hey, I'm coming too! I'm talking, of course, about my house in ESO, Lynchell Grand Manor, or as it's known by Oblivion's time, Fort Lynchell. Well, I guess Kvatch doesn't have a great future in store, and neither does your lovely house from the look of it. My beautiful home! It's nothing but a ruin by Oblivion's time. Oh, your poor house. And your poor toilet. Oh no, not my beautiful smelly toilet. At least you won't have to worry about flushing. Oh, well, that's true. Hey, Varen's wall is completely gone by oblivion. Yeah, Varen's wall goes right from Kavach to Lynchel Green Manor in ESO. The difference in graphics between Oblivion and ESO is wild, even knowing ESO itself is 10 years old now. I can't believe it's been 10 years. And just within ESO in that time, the jump in quality between the zones we got at launch in 2014 to Gold Road in 2024 is massive. Yeah, I really don't know if you could run today's ESO on a 2014 computer. We really do push the technology, so you may need to upgrade your PC for this game, but it's got a lot of great stuff going on in it and the fans are responding awesome. Lots of great stuff going on. It is awesome. I hope y'all enjoyed this little look around Skingrad and how it compared to its last appearance in The Elder Scrolls 4. The Elder Scrolls Online Gold Road is available now on PC and Mac and will be arriving on Xbox and PlayStation June 18th. And remember, subscribe. <laughs> no. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Yes, unlike smoking, subscribing is big and clever.